Peace, peace, peace. This is your international sales and marketing villain, aka bad guy, Tiger Toledo. And you already know what it is, man. You rock it with the best. You heard? And you guys might hear my son Noah, who's six months. He might he got the hiccups right now. Give him a little hiccup. Give him a hiccup. But anyway. So, ladies and gentlemen, the first broadcast got a little bit interrupted, but we are back. We are back. This is episode 12 of 100 in my 100 for 100 series. That is 100 videos in 100 days. That is a personal challenge I am giving myself to break out of a comfort zone, to explore a new universe of consistent, massive action so thank you guys for tuning in and rocking with your boy on this journey so welcome 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 everyone for tuning in what's up jackie um this is going to be an interesting interesting episode here frustration frustration is something that a lot of entrepreneurs go through. We get frustrated with maybe the progress of the company. Maybe we didn't make enough money this week. Maybe we didn't uh, our, we didn't execute our marketing the way we wanted to. Maybe we didn't hire that you know the best candidate for that job. Whatever it is, frustration is just something that comes with the territory of being an entrepreneur. So I want to share something with you guys to help you guys reduce some of the frustration. It's going to be a couple of tips here. One of the reasons why a lot of entrepreneurs get frustrated is because they're selling products to people that don't want what they're selling. They're trying to push their products and services to people that do not want what they're selling so it's like i sell a treadmill right I, I work at you know some treadmill place and i go to a place where people are in wheelchairs and i'm saying hey here's a flyer here's a coupon hey come check us out we're selling treadmills for 20 percent off dude it don't matter if i'm selling it for 75 percent off they're not coming to buy. They don't qualify. They don't qualify. I'll give you an example. I went into Sam's Club. And if you guys ever went to Sam's Club before, you know that uh, sometimes AT&T Direct TV is usually there over by the business electronics section. So I'm walking over by the business section and looking at printers and copiers and stuff. And the guy comes over to me. He was like, hey. Do you uh, got cable? I said, no, I don't watch television. Right there, that guy should have said, this guy does not qualify for the products and services that I am selling. Let me move on. But he chose to ignore what I said and immediately went into a rebuttal. Well, how about sports? Do you watch sports? No, sir, I do not watch television. You got to watch something. You probably watch business channels, don't you? You're in the business section. No, I don't watch television. So after the fourth time, I said, you know what? I'm going to deliberately go waste this guy's time. I am going to frustrate the shit out of him because he is listening with the intent to reply He's not listening with the intent to understand me. So a half an hour, 45 minutes go by. And he's like, so what do you think? You ready to get the direct TV? I was like, no. I never intended to buy it. And you should have known that when you asked me the, the question the first time you met me. I told you I don't watch television. Now... You're going to be frustrated for the rest of the damn day because you just wasted 45 minutes on an unqualified prospect. 
And that is what a lot of entrepreneurs are doing. You are not qualifying your prospects. First thing that you should do, and I, I, I've made it in previous videos, but I'll say it again. You need to design a call script. Now, in your call script, the first question should be a qualifying or a disqualifying question. I'll give you an example. In my notary business, all we do is offer mobile notary service. So when a person calls me and says, hi, um, I'm interested in uh, notary service. How much is your services? Immediately, I ask them, I, I tell them, I say, I or this company is a mobile notary service. Is that what you're looking for? If the person says, no, I thought you had a location. I was going to come to your location. Immediately, I disqualify the person because that person is not conducive with what I'm selling. It, he doesn't qualify. He's looking for a currency exchange, not a mobile notary service. So another person may call and say, hi, my mother is in the hospital. She can't get around. She's confined to a bed. I need some a notary to come out to, you know, notarize our documents. That is my customer. That is the customer. So immediately I'm I'm removing a lot of frustration, removing a lot of frustration. The next tip that I will give you guys besides that one is you're selling way too many products to your customers. And this is where the villain side of me comes out. They only buy what you sell them. Customers only buy what you sell them. When I first started at Bally Total Fitness, I thought that I had to show them all the memberships that we had, which was like six of them. We had six different memberships. I showed them all the memberships. I was like, we got this membership, that membership. Hey, this doesn't work for you. We can move over here. You, This doesn't work for you. We can do this one instead. I was giving them way too many options. The magic number is three. I give them three options. One that doesn't look appealing at all. The middle one, is, which is very appealing. And then the third one, which is way out of their budget, way out of their scope, they're just going to go back to the middle one by default. Your customers will buy what you sell them. You're giving them too many options and you're confusing them and you're causing information overload. And that's when they say, you know what? Let me think about it. Do you have a business card? <laughs> How many times have you guys heard that bullshit? Let me think about it. Let me discuss this with my wife. Well, if the person tells you that they needed to discuss it with their wife or their husband, you didn't qualify that person in the first place to realize that that person was not the decision maker. The wife and the husband together become the decision maker. So take that for what it's worth, ladies and gentlemen. I only speak of stuff that I have done and executed successfully. So use this with a grain of salt peace love and happiness to all you guys if you guys have any comments or questions drop it in the comment section below hey if you have a topic that you want me to cover on the next episode holla at your bizzle